Welcome back to Tools and Track. In this episode, we're looking at gussets. Okay, so as you can see, round two with all of the brackets shortened by 20 odd mil or whatever it's meant to be. And this is now sitting a bit closer to where it was supposed to be. What we need to do first is a highly satisfying flip to a new page. New beauty. I'm not going to flip onto the next page of the hinge job. Quite simple because the next page of the hinge job races way ahead. Now on the page we've just hit, you'll see that there's a number of geometry picker points. That allows us to know exactly where these brackets need to sit on the front of the car. The problem we're going to have is, because this deviates a lot from where the original plans were, you'll see that there's like mad gussets that are going to be needed to add strength, simply because where these brackets go on the front of the car, there's just no meat for them to land on. So we're going to have to add a bit of strength here. That's not the only thing, I'm going to be adding a lot of strength, not just in this one bracket that it tells me to do, but in all the others as well. Quite simply because there's going to be a bit more weight than this is designed to take. Now if we start digging into these sizes here, you'll see that there's a number of projections from a number of different places. Namely, the absolute base of the car and the absolute front of the car. Now, that's what we're going to use to work out exactly where these upper brackets need to live. Where's that straight hand? Very bottom drawer, where all the other ear tools live. It's ten, I kind of sort it all by grouping, so... I like you try to do it, we should probably write on the front or something. Probably. Oh, like a label printer? I wonder, wonder if I could fabricate a label printer. Right, yeah. we need to be like that. I'm getting the tools lined up so that we can start to remove the hubs from all of the surrounding <laughs> Brake calipers, carriers, discs, all that garbage out of the way so that I can provide you with a hub and you can make things with it. I am now going to go and fetch a hub and we're going to take bits apart and see how well that goes. And going by the track record we've had so far, it won't happen. There'll be rust everywhere and the bolts will shear and we'll need to replace it all. But let's give it a bash. Yes, this is a hub and the wheel which it's attached to. Because when storing such a device, why would one not leave the entire assembly attached to the wheel for storage? We're all about intelligent solutions here at BBC2. You get my dinner ready, otherwise I'll need to knock you out. BBC two reference there. What? Top gear, Clarkson, both. No, no. Hey, I would do it wrong, but that would be a mistake. <laughs> okay, ladies and gentlemen, you will observe the hub. So let's start by removing the caliper, which is already off. Well, that just became quite a lot easier. Quite a lot harder actually, because this isn't the front hub. This is one of the rear hubs. Talk amongst yourselves. Okay, so, as I tried to do the first time, now we remove the brake caliper, which is actually here. If you've somehow stumbled into this video and are curious as to how to change brakes, this is probably not the episode for you. But if you find it entertaining, by all means, please continue to watch. There's always a solution for every problem. Hey, at last. Now let's move on to the part that probably isn't going to come off, which is the caliper carrier bolts. These could be rusted on, they could be seized on, they could be threaded on. One doesn't go on. Or they could come off in the first attempt. Well, that was nice and easy. Here's hoping the other side goes just as smoothly. Aye, I'm going to go in no. That is not going smoothly. Right, the past few episodes have been a bit, how do I say, scattergun. 
we've made a lot of mistakes and as a result I am determined that in this episode we're not going to make any. What we are going to do though is provide a lot of detail on how you are supposed to get these suspension brackets on. I've done all my measurements and I think I've presented this in a way that I should should be able to uh, explain it so you can repeat the process. So the first thing you'll note is we've got a big lump of 3mm plate on the front of the, the chassis. Now remember we're using pickup dating points to project from here backwards. So the first pickup dating point we're going to need is up here. Now we've already done this process on the lower ones which wasn't quite as tricky as the upper one. The first measurement is the height that this bracket needs to sit from the base. That needs to be 252 millimetres. Now it's measured from the centre hole of where the bolt goes through here. Once you've got the centre hole drilled, it's a bit tricky. So what I've done is projected from the centre line out to the side of the bracket here, and I've notched it. Now as this bracket sits perfectly level, this will be accurate if we measure it up from the base. So, 252, boom, on the nose. So we can knock this one up and make it tight, and then we can use that measurement to project backwards. That's that sorted. We need to project back from the datum 83.5 millimetres to the centre line of this guy, right? Now, this is 50 millimetres apart, precisely. So we do 83.5 minus 25 gives us 58.5. It's been a long day. So we measure this and it's 58.5. So that's good. We know that that offset to there is correct. Next, we need to work out the distance apart that these two need to be. On the diagram, you'll see that the centre line from here to the centre line here needs to be 192 millimetres. So, whether it's the centre line or any of these outside edges, it's going to be the same measurement. So checking here, we'll see 192 millimetres from edge to edge. And just for the sheer number, it's the same in all three as well. So know the distance apart for these is correct. The last thing we need to do is make sure that they share the same, I don't know, what we call this, x-axis plane. We've worked out the z, we've worked out the y, x, ah, I don't know. And that's quite simply done because of the jig. Turn this on, we zero it to the datum point, which is now zero. So I know that that is perfectly level. The one last thing I should really do is measure from the front and the back of this to the centre line to make sure that it's lining up straight. So from here to here yes. should be a specific measurement. It, it should doesn't matter what the specific... equal yes. here to here. Yes. Sorry, I'm having to point and point the camera viewers. If my work is terrible, you can write to us at nobody gives a f at your dasels a1.com. The measurements from the centre line out to here, we can pick any datum point we like as long as the front and the back share the same axis which as long will be as either of relatively aye so the threaded bar in this instance will be the axis mm -hmm. uh, and the measurement won't matter but it just need that the front and the back measurement must match whatever that is as long that as it matches it's totally is it perpendicular yeah. to the all we're measuring is perpendicularity oh, easy for me to say this is what we mean when we say this is total live and unscripted i haven't even measured this yet so i'm i'm standing around like i'm being a smug it, it might not work but it's good because when you when you inevitably measure it and it's wrong then the, the viewers, the viewers get, well I'm just going by previous experience really. It, Nothing is going wrong today. It's all going to be perfect. What are we doing with this? This provides our centre line projection. North south, yep. Up, so that we can get a measurement across. So now that we've got that. measure from this end here, because that's in the centre line, to so. our rod. Yep. Let's go away 300 and... 28. 328. Boom. Thank you and good night. Let's get the welder out.
Yes, I want to do it. See if he asks me to make more of these. We're not friends anymore. Probably going to need a few more of these. It's been fun, viewers. Much like Ed China and Aunt Anstead, I'm off for better opportunities. You're not going to find any. <laughs> <laughs> this is a suspension bracket. Yes, darling. This is my suspension bush. Yes, darling. What we need holders that will be the start of the bush bones. We'll go over this. And then that, obviously being a rotated member, will then project out to be the bush bone. The first part I'm going to need for that is this. We are cutting a bar, but not in the usual plantation sense. <laughs> if you want to cut metal, actually any product, to a certain size. <laughs> There's a product, we are just drug dealers. See if you measure the 36 mm and cut that, you're going to actually end up with like 34 mm because you've got for the grinder disc to contend with. So a 36 mm cut is actually really going to be about a 38 mm measurement, probably even more than that. Um, what I've started doing while I learned exactly how to do this is, is cutting far more than I need and then just trimming it down either by using this lovely stone rotating device of happiness to choose your fingers off um, or by just continually attacking it with the grinder. So what we're going to do is we're going to measure out 36mm and then we're going to add a wee bit of space on we're going to cut it and see what we end up with and hopefully then Tommy can stop assuming that all my cuts are wrong in all the other videos which hurts me deeply and I'm having to see a therapist about it. So let's measure it, top to bottom, and let's see what we end up with. Burning my hands off in the process. If only there was thick leather gloves. 39 mil. Yep. So it, it's a usual effort for me, really. Well, that's good. But that's a f***ing great. This was resting against this side that I did when the eyes rotated. And it's pierced the f***ing... Yep. Nope, I won't. So, see inside here. This has happened, how do we get rid of that? So, that's called an internal burr. Yeah. Okay. Get rid of this. Okay. This is a deburring tool. And you just peel it like a f***ing apple. Yeah, nice. That's bad, Okay. No hammer. Oh, wow, that went in easily. <laughs> Doesn't it? That's amazing, the difference it makes. <laughs> Time to start moving on to some gussets. Uh, we've got the top and the bottom brackets welded in. I've just chucked in the two big uh, inch by inch spars that hold this in, but we're still short on a lot of metal to keep this stuff square. So, how do we rake about in the AMX5 that we chopped up in episode one? I'm gonna find these because it's a hairdresser's car, that's the joke. Um, so, now we're gonna get some cardboard and it's time for this pizza box that's been lying about since like episode three come into use. Hi. So, obviously we talked about how we cut and how we get the measurements precise and um, we went to do some work on that which was about two hours worth of footage that was an abysmal f***ing failure. Um, the pieces that subsequently came out were, well several of these, my final effort, that clearly is, is not so good, there's a pretty significant gap in there and it's a, a weird angle as well which is not so brilliant. So, the summary of this challenge is that no, my attempts at slightly overcutting, slightly undercutting, trying to tailor it didn't work. So we, we had to go back to the drawing board and think about, we need to make eight of these cuts. So, we have our magic china drill assembly, not drill assembly, grinder assembly. Yep, I'm clever. You think for a man who spends so much time in grinder, you can remember the name of it? Ken, but I just get confused between all of my different applications. And what we've done is we've got a little bit of metal with a bend in it. 
clamped into the actual assembly of the grinder post and the reason why we've done this is because when we insert said tube and we cut it's going to be exactly 36mm I believe is the cut it's a new day um, but yeah that's the plan so we're just going to chop 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 measure up at the end and see what happens now there is still a degree of danger in this in that if I don't hold the pole completely at the right position it'll cut at an angle because obviously this isn't quite straight but this is as good as we're going to get for mass producing these so wish me luck and uh, when I fail and start swearing again I will get back to you there we go another episode in the bag I'm sad to say because I'm cold it's December and uh, winter is well and truly here your winter master. is coming, your master winter. is coming. In the next episode, we're going to start probably looking at wishbones. And then... What was that? And then the episode after that, we're going to start moving the build onto the back of the car. And hopefully, not too long, we'll actually have all four wishbones on and the car standing at its own feet. So, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Uh, if you've not already subscribed, the thing for that is here. Thanks to everyone who's joined us on Patreon. If you haven't done that, the link for that's in the comments below. Um, if you're new to the... Buy mugs! Uh, no, you can't buy them. You can only get them if you're on Patreon. That's a, that's a reason to subscribe, because they are properly good mugs with a properly good logo. And there'll be more merch coming, uh, but again, it will be available to Patreon. So, uh, cheers for watching, guys. There'll be bloopers coming. If you haven't already worked this out, by the way, I put blooper reels after all this stuff, so... Keep an eye out for that, and we will see you in the next episode. Take care, guys. See you later. I'm gonna, I'm gonna allow 0.15. Bear in mind that this is threaded rod. I did, I've checked this a number of times, and it's been zero every time. Good things come in small. No, that's you think I'll keep this. <laughs> Point one. It just really depends. There you go. Point. Just twist it until you get the answer you want.